Question number nine from the um, Pure Maths 1 specimen paper for the International A Level, IAL. Um, here we have a sketch of a curve C. Okay, kind of like an ellipse type of shape almost, um, an oval type of shape. And um, you have the curve crosses the negative y axis at the point P. Okay. Uh, we're told the line L1, which is a straight line shown here, has um, a gradient of 2 and passes through P as shown in the figure. So we know the gradient of line 1 is equal to 2 and it passes through this point P, which is the same point where this curve passes through the negative y-axis. Um, find the equation of line L1 and give your equation in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants to be found. Okay, so we need to find the equation of a line. Okay, and as we know, to find the equation of a line, we need two pieces of information. Okay, so the equation of a line, you need two pieces of information. One, you need to know um, the gradient of the line. Okay, which is equal to 2. Okay, because the question told us the gradient is 2. And second, you need to know the point that it goes through. Okay, you need to know the coordinates of a point. So we know that it goes through the point P. And that's what we've got to find. What is the equation? What are the coordinates of the point P? Now, to find the coordinates of the point P, we can use the fact that we know P is the same point where the curve passes through the y-axis. Okay, so if we take the equation of this curve, which is 4x squared plus 9y squared plus 4xy equals 64, and we substitute into it, we, we know that it crosses the y-axis uh, when it crosses the y-axis when x is zero. Okay, every point on the y-axis x is zero. So if we substitute into this equation x equals 0, we'll see the y coordinates of where it passes through, you know, basically the place where it crosses the y axis. So x equals 0, you're going to end up with 9y squared, this will become 0, this will become 0 because you have 4 times x times 0, is equal to 64. So y squared is equal to 64 over 9. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 64 over 9, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 64 is 8 and the square root of 9 is 3. So the point P is when y is negative. Okay, P, we know y is negative. Okay, so we know that the y coordinate of P must be negative 8 over 3 and the x coordinate, of course, is 0 because it's on the y axis. So that's the point 0 and 0 and negative 8 over 3. So we have all the information we need now to find the equation of the line. So we know the point and the gradient, so we can say y um, equals mx plus c. This is easier for us to use this form because we know already that c is minus 8 over 3. So we can just put it straight away in the equation y is equal to 2x minus 8 over 3. And there we have our answer in the form that is required. In this case, it's much easier to use y equals mx plus c rather than y minus y1 equals x uh, m times x minus x1 because we know the y-intercept and we know the gradient directly from okay, what we found. And there we have the answer to part A. Okay, now for part B, it says the line L2 has equation y equals 2x plus k. Okay, that's another line. Equation 2, 2x plus k. So we see it's parallel to the first equation. All right, um, where k is a constant. Uh, show that the y coordinate of any points where line 2 meets c are solutions of this equation here. Okay, so now um, when the line and the curve intersect, Okay, we want to find the values where the line and the curve intersect. We need to find the values of y when the line and the curve intersect. So what we can do here is we can substitute, 
okay um, this equation into that equation and we substitute this in this equation into that equation we will then th then therefore we will find um, the pl places where they intersect okay so what we can do here they want it, they want it to be so that we end up with just the y's okay in the equation all right so one way we can do it is um, if you want to end up with the y's what we can do is we can replace the we can make what x the subject of this formula so you have y minus k divided by 2 is equal to x i've just made this x the subject of the formula i've subtracted k and divided by 2 and if i substitute this into this formula okay instead of the x then i'll end up with something with just y's in it which is what we want we want something with just y's in it so if I now put x equals y minus k over 2 into this formula, I'll have 4. Now instead of x, I'm going to write y minus k over 2 squared. And I'll have plus 9y squared. That's fine. That's already with y. And then I'm going to replace the x as have 4 times y times the x. And the x is y minus k over 4. Oh, sorry, over 2 y minus k over 2 equals 64 so it, it looks like it might be something that's going to give us hassle but these fractions will cancel out as we can see so um, that's fine so let's continue now so I'm going to square this so I'll have 4 and this 4 this squared I'll just do the whole thing you got y squared minus you have 2 times k times y plus k squared over 4 plus 9y squared plus and you're going to have this 2 cancelling with this 4 giving you 2 so you have 2y squared minus 2ky 2y squared minus 2ky equals 64 now this 4 will cancel with this 4 so I'm left here with let me just move this question down myself some more space okay so here I've gonna I'm gonna left with y squared minus 2ky plus k squared you know I'll just add these together this will be plus 11 y squared uh, minus 2ky equals 64 okay so now I'm gonna have um, y squared plus 11 y squared that's gonna be 12 y squared and I'll have minus 2ky minus 2ky which is minus 4ky and I'll have k squared minus 64 how do they want us to write the answer 12y squared minus 4ky plus k squared minus 64 that's right plus k squared and minus 64 equals 0 so you can see how that worked out to give us exactly what they asked us to get okay so that's part b done and now part c given that l2 meets c at two distinct points find the range of possible values for k now if the line two this is the this is the equation which tells us um where line two meets okay um the, the curve c all right this will tell us the y coordinate of the point where the line two meets the curve c now, so we want to find the range of possible values for y, <coughs> knowing that it meets at two points. Now, if, if line 2 meets the curve at two points, okay, whoops, all right, that's fine. All right, here it will meet at no points, and so tangent meets at one point. And these values here it will meet it at two points. Okay, so we want to find the range of values of k for which it will cut it in two distinct points. Now, when there are two solutions, see this equation that we ended up with is a quadratic. It's in the form ax squared. Oops. It's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And we know that the solution to a quadratic equation can either have no solutions or one solution or two solutions okay if we want to find the case here where there's two separate solutions okay so that's when 
we use that what's called the discriminant. The discriminant b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than zero for it to have two distinct solutions. And that's from the quadratic formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. This is like a bit of a side point, but as long as this part of the quadratic formula is greater than zero, then there will be two solutions. If this part of the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, you'll only have one solution, which is minus b over 2a. And if this part of the quadratic equation is negative, then you'll have no solutions because this will make it undefined. Okay, so we want to find the case where there will be two solutions where b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. So we have our equation as 12y squared minus 4ky plus k squared minus 64 is equal to zero. So in this case, our a is the coefficient of x squared, which is 12. Our b is the coefficient of x, which is minus 4k. And our c is the constant, which is k squared minus 64. Okay, so we need to now solve this inequality, basically, to find the range of possible values of k. So let's, b squared, you're going to have minus 4k, and all of that squared, including the negative side, minus 4 times a, which is 12, times c, which is k squared minus 64, and we want to find when that's greater than 0. So this is going to give you 16 k squared, you're going to have uh, four, that's 48 minus 48 k squared, okay, plus 48 times 64, okay, let's just do that. Now 48 times 64, which gives us 3072, 3072 is greater than zero okay so now okay, now we can simplify this we get 16 k squared minus 48 k squared um, 16 minus 48 16 minus 48 32 minus 32 k squared so you have minus 32 k squared plus 3072 is greater than zero okay so now we can divide both of these by minus 32 okay so if you divide by let's see 3072 divided by 32 gives you what 96 good so if i divide if i divide by minus 32 i've got to change this direction of the inequality sign okay Divide by a negative number or multiply a negative number, the inequality sign must change direction. So this will now becomes k squared, becomes positive. This becomes negative 96. So we want to know when k squared minus 96 is less than 0. Okay, so if we make a little sketch, k squared minus 96 will pass through minus 96 here, and it will go something like this. So we've got to find where it equals zero first. So let's find out where it equals zero. K squared minus 96 <coughs> equals zero. K squared is equal to uh, 96. So therefore, we can say K squared is equal to plus or minus the square root of 96. Okay, so, sorry, not K squared, K. Now, it's important for you to rationalize this and to show how you rationalized it. I've seen students lose marks in P1 from not showing how they rationalize 96. So 96 got to split up into two numbers. One of them has to be a perfect square. Okay, let's see. 4 times 24. 4 times 24. There's still um, a perfect square. Let's see 16. 96 divided by 16. Yep. Yeah. So you're going to have 16 times 6. All right, so that gives you plus or minus 4 times root 6. Okay, so this is 4 root 6 here. And this is negative 4 root 6. So we want to know when k squared minus 96 is less than 0. Well, it's less than 0 between these two values. 
okay when k is between minus 4 root 6 and oops and plus 4 root 6 okay you can see that it's less than 0 okay between the values of minus 4 root 6 and plus 4 root 6 that's when it's below the you can say the x-axis here okay so the solutions are when k is between negative 4 root 6 and positive 4 root 6 that's when there will be two solutions to that equation that we saw above and there we have the answer to this question